I'm Ken Nelson with the Tactical Performance Center. Let's talk about how to get a little bit better every time you do something. Let's talk about the after action review. I've got big markers now, and it's because of the after action review that I did where I decided it was too hard for people to see my handwriting. After action review changes things in small ways that sometimes have big results. Okay, so what is an after action review? The first thing I want to stress about an after action review is that it's about process. It's not about outcome. An after action review does not really say, I had a great day at the range or a fabulous vacation. It talks about the processes you used to having that great day at the range or the processes you used to have that fantastic vacation. So it's about process. Now sometimes I'm going to refer to it as an after action review and sometimes as an AAR. I use the two interchangeably. The first thing is a summary of the action. What did you do? When did you do it? What were the, uh, provide enough details that you can remember roughly what happened. An example would be, I went to the Southern Utah Practical Shooting Range for a 300 round practice with my Glock 43 with a focus on trigger isolation and letting recoil happen. So a summary of the action. It doesn't need to be detailed. You just need to have enough detail that uh, you can remember what happened. Another important thing about the, about the after action review is I recommend strongly writing it down on pen and paper, not on smartphone, tablet, or laptop. You think more creatively and you remember more when you handwrite. Okay, so try that. And as a separate part of that, make sure you use clear and legible handwriting so you can read it a year later. The first part of an after action review is what worked. What process worked that I cannot imagine doing this action again without using this process as part of it? I call it hugging success. Hey success, get on over here, stick around a while, hug it. You won't, if it worked, you want to keep doing it. All right. We do not dwell on failure. We don't even really talk about it. I'm much more interested in success. All right, so, but some things aren't gonna work, or maybe you think some things are working but can be better, and that's the way I like to think about things. So there, the second part is ideas to try. Process ideas to try. Okay, so an example of what worked might be devoting a practice to trigger isolation and uh, recoil management or uh, letting recoil happen, right? At some point, that was in my ideas to try. I'm anticipating, which I could dwell on, but instead, I prefer to, to focus on, well, what might help anticipation? What should I try? All right, so that idea was, hey, why don't I do three exercise or three practices of 200 to 300 rounds devoted entirely to trigger isolation and letting recoil happen. So I wrote that down and then I did it. And guess what, it worked. So I jotted that down too. All right, so ideas to try. It can be about anything. Something can be improved. What do, you, what do I think might improve that something from a process perspective? All right, so that leads to the third item. Tools and training. Now tools might be ideas to try. I just like to itemize them in a, in a separate section. Tools. Okay, an example, well, I'm going to try writing bigger. And a tool would be a bigger whiteboard marker. Okay. Now training. This is not entirely my pitch for coming to TPC to train, although we'd love to have you. This is where you go when you don't know what to do for number two. I'm, re I'm anticipating recall and I don't know what to do. Well, seek outside guidance for ideas to try. That can be reading, googling, 
YouTubing, shooting with people better than you. I got way better at tennis by playing with people that were kicking my bottom. Okay, works. I'm talking to them about it. So that's training. You do. You go to training. You get outside counsel when you don't have ideas to try about something that you want to get better at. Right. So that's the after action we do. I'm going to challenge you to start incorporating this into the important things in your life. If you just want to do it for shooting, that's fine. But why don't you do it about travel to your next vacation? Why don't you do it about hotel selection when you're about to drop a couple thousand dollars on hotels for a family vacation? Why don't you do it for things that are important that you want to get better at? Summary of action, what work that you can't imagine doing or doing this thing again without doing that, things to try, tools you're going to get that will help, and outside counsel to help you think of things to try. It's super simple. Have a notebook, write it down, get better every day. If you want to write up some ARs about, uh, about anything, you can be about shooting, put them in the comments. Put them in the comments. We'll critique them positively, give you some ideas about, uh, about how they might be better. Um, and also, you know, it'll, it'll be fun to see what people are trying. This could be my outside counsel for ideas to try. One of the things I'd caution you on is that for some people, it can be difficult to start thinking about process, not outcome. And that, in my experience, when students give us AARs to review, that's usually the first thing we're working them through is to transition from, a pro from an outcome-based thinker to a process-based thinker. Remember, you are where you start. Work your process, accept your outcome, learn from your outcome, change your process, work your process, smile with a small internal glee at your improved outcome, repeat. Okay, I'm Ken Nelson, I hope this helps. I'll see you on the range.